Peace be with you all. Welcome to the HRC Law Class. Hope you all are enjoying the day. I'm your brother, Casa Fold. Here with your brother, Zach Gua. Tell them, everyone. All right. As you all know, we discuss the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, and we understand that the Old Covenant is actually not done away. It's just preparation to be brought under the bond of that covenant here in the times to come. And it may be something one may wonder, well, who? are these children that are partaking in these covenants. So let's see the children of the covenant. Can you read Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, please? Yep. For I am Ahiah, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. All right. So because he doesn't change, he won't consume the true sons of Jacob because Abraham and Jacob, their fathers, are his servants, Isaac as well, of course. Can you read Psalms 105 and 6, please? O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Isaiah 41 and 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Okay. Can you also read Psalms 102, verse 27 and 28, so we can learn about this Allahayim, the Allahayim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who does not change. All right? Psalms 102, verse 27. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servant shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. That isn't going to change. That's who he is. The children of his servants, they shall continue and be established. As we know in the law itself, he says, showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. He rewards those servants for doing well by prospering their seed. It's the sons of the righteous servants who will make it through the tribulations. Can you read Tobit chapter 13 verse 9, please? O Jerusalem, the holy city, he will scourge thee for thy children's works and will have mercy again on the sons of the righteous. So there we see, it's even being told to Jerusalem, the mother of us all, that children will be scourged, but the mercy is going to be upon the sons of the righteous. So those men that served Elohim of old is their sons that are going to make it through. The prophecies foretell of the righteous of all's children being within the covenant, and they will make it through the times to come. Can you read Sirach chapter 44, verse 1 to 13, please? Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that beget us. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Mm -hmm. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Wise and eloquent are their instructions. Such as found out musical tunes and recited verses in writing. Rich men furnished with ability living peaceably in their habitations. All these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. There be of them that have left a name behind them that their praises might be reported. But these were merciful men whose righteousness hath not been forgotten. Notice. Not only were these people his servants, but they were merciful men. And that doesn't get forgotten before Allah. Continue, please. With their seed shall continually remain a good inheritance, and their children are within the covenant. There we see whose children are partaking in the covenant, the merciful and righteous men of old. Allah has an inheritance for them. Continue, please. Their seed standeth fast and their children for their sakes. This is also part of humility of knowing 
this is actually in the law. Deuteronomy chapter 7, Moses said it wasn't because of his love for us. It was because his love for our fathers that he's having this mercy upon us. All right. Continue, please. Their seed shall remain forever, and their glory shall not be blotted out. Thus a remnant will be reserved. Thus, this is the seed of this generation in these end times that shall serve Allah and be counted for a generation, according to prophecy. Can you read Psalms 22, verse 30 and 31, please? A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto the people that shall be born, that he hath done this. See, those people, that seed is going to come forth and they're going to declare his righteousness. It's Allah that's doing it. As Paul speaks of his Allah that willeth and worketh in us. We're learning how Allah is really doing everything. He's doing it for his name's sake, for his oath's sake, so that he may keep his covenant with our fathers. It's truly humbling for us to know, like, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he knoweth. Allah Hayyam, that he exercises loving kindness. Like, that's the simplicity of it, knowing what's really happening here. So, this is the posterity of the servants of Allah Hayyam, of the children of Israel. Ahaya does not change, as we see, and he also rewards the righteous of the Gentiles who serve him to deliver their seed as well in these end times. The law opened the door for the Gentiles to enter the congregation. Can you read Deuteronomy 23, verse 7 and 8, please? Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of Ahia in their third generation. Thus there will be Egyptians and Edomites who enter and are saved. There is a posterity of the Gentiles as a whole that will believe as well to be preserved as they are also called by the name of Ahia. Can you read Amos chapter 9 verse 11 and 12 please? And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as the days of old. Okay. So the children of David, his posterity, they're going to be built up in these end times. Okay, continue, please. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith Ahiah that doeth this. Thus, there are Gentiles that are called unto the faith in these end times, and they'll serve the house of David in the kingdom, being free from oppression, because that's according to the law. Can you read Exodus chapter 23, verse 9, please? Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing you were strangers in the land of Egypt. It's interesting that the children of Israel have to go through this affliction in this world so that we can have the right heart to be able to actually take care of people that work for us in the times to come. The mindset for those who are called is to continue in the faith, speaking of the brethren of the Gentiles in this instance. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20 to 24, please? Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called, Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man. Likewise also, he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price, but not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called there and abide with Allah. There we see, even for the brethren that are called by Ahaya, being called as servants, you're the Lord's free man. And the viewpoint is not to be the servants of men, but the servants of Allah in any case. All right. 
continue for more edification on being servants. Uh, Ephesians 6, verse 7 and 8, please. With good will doing service, as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. That goes for all men of all nations. And the children of Israel, like we see those sons of David, they're going to be built up. So they're going to be full in the faith. And they're going to do just and equally as a master should. Can you read Colossians 4 and 1, please? Masters, give unto your servant that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. So as you can see, everybody's being prepared. Everybody is called is being prepared with a Jew or Gentile for the calling of what's going to be in the kingdom. Right now, the master is in heaven, but men are being prepared because Yahweh is going to come down in his kingdom and be right there. And everyone's going to be doing just and right. So thus you have a remnant of the Gentiles, as he said, he's getting all the heathen that are called by his name, called by Allah Hayim to be his people and the children of Allah Hayim free from vexation and oppression, serving the house of David. Can you read Romans chapter 9, verse 24 to 26, please? Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living Allah Hayim. Amen. So it's all nations, children of the living Allah Hayim. You have also from scriptures, the Egyptians and the Assyrians are definitely going to convert to the gospel as well and be amongst the people of Ahaya. Can you read Isaiah chapter 19, verse 21 to 25, please? And Ahia shall be known in Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know Ahia in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto Ahia and perform it. And Ahia shall smite Egypt, and he shall smite and heal it. And they shall return even to Ahia, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptian shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. Whom Ahia of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people. In Assyria, the work of my hands. In Israel, mine inheritance. So we see salvation is for more than just Israel. And even the Egyptians, whenever you're Allah people, he's going to smite and heal. <laughs> you, you call right. unto this, there's affliction that comes with it. <laughs> but it's for <laughs> our well-being. <laughs> so we see even the Egyptians, they shall serve with the Assyrians. And they won't care for it because they're the Lord's freemen. All right. So also there are Gentiles who are not called, but shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Can you read Isaiah 14 and 1, please? For Ahia will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. These Gentiles shall help Israel to get back to their land, and they will be spared for not trodden down the seed of Jacob. All right. Can you read Isaiah 14 and 2? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Ahia for service and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So thus we see here, these are a different set of Gentiles. You had the ones that believed and were called, they're going to serve the house of David. But then the rest of the strangers that are going to cleave to the house of Jacob in the end, they're going to be spared for having that mercy and helping the children of Jacob. This is a part of prophecy. And 
these servants and handmaids are going to serve the rest of the house of Israel, not the house of David. Can you read Second Baruch chapter 72, verse 2 to 6, please? After the signs have come, of which you were told before, when the nations become turbulent, and the time of my Messiah is come, he shall both summon all the nations, and some of them shall he spare, and some of them he shall slay. These things, therefore, shall come upon the nations which are to be spared by him. Every nation which knows not Israel and has not trodden down the seed of Jacob shall indeed be spared. And this because some out of every nation shall be subjected to thy people. But all those who are ruled over you or have known you shall be given to the sword. And we see that's what's to come at the end when Christ has already subdued the earth. He's going to grab all the nations and bring them before him and spare some and the others will be given to the sword. And what's the reason that some will be spared? Because some out of every nation shall be subject to thy people. So that's for those handmaids and servants who are going to help and be spared in the end to be in the kingdom with the rest of the children of Israel. And they'll be learning righteousness, learning the ways of Ahayah. As you see in the prophecies, I can't remember where it's at exactly, but the Gentiles will be telling each other, come, let us go on to the house. Let us go on to Zion or go on to Jerusalem that we may learn. All right. In the kingdom, it's going to be peace for everybody. It's not going to be what we see in the world today. Can you read Second Baruch chapter 74, verse 1, please? And it shall come to pass in those days that the reapers shall not grow weary, nor those that build be toil-worn, for the works shall of themselves speedily advance together with those who do them in much tranquility. Right. Evil spirits and their works will be put down, so there will be peace between all nations in the kingdom. Can you read Baruch 73 and 2, please? And then healing shall descend and do, and disease shall withdraw, and anxiety and anguish and lamentation pass from amongst men, and gladness proceed through the whole earth, and no one shall again die untimely, nor shall any adversity suddenly befall. The judgments and abusive talk and contentions and revengeance and blood and passions and envy and hatred and whatsoever things are like these shall go into condemnation when they are removed. And there we see. It's not going to be what this world has. It's going to be tranquility for all. The children of the covenant from the sons of the righteous of old for the children of Israel. And then the Gentiles that are called. And then the Gentiles that are spared that cleave unto the house of Jacob. All right. Hopefully that helps understand who will be partaking in the covenant and also some more edification on for the nations, what's going to be transpired for them in the kingdom. All right. Anything else? Well, that's good. All right. Praise Allah. Catch y'all on the next law class. All right. Ciao, everyone. <laughs>